sure, Sir Isaac Newton unraveled the mysteries of gravity. But could he have unraveled the mysteries of Rubik's Cube? The answer is no. They're fiddly, misleading, and offensive to the colorblind community. Back in the 80s, these little blocks were all the evidence you need to prove how intelligent you are. Well, I don't know that for a fact, as I was born in the 90s. It it's just what I had been told from the bigger kids on the playground at school. They would mock me and throw Rubik's cubes at my equally blocky head, only because I couldn't figure it out. It's just too many sides. Trauma and scarring aside, I've dedicated years of my life to figuring out how to make this in Houdini. And today, we're gonna break down how it was done. Are you like one that you see on CG Wiki? What's that? Yeah, you know CG Wiki. CG Wiki. Right on the it's easily broken down for you. Well, did he? Oh, yeah, shit. Well, ah, but did he? Oh, shit. Well, it's a good thing his math's right. Do you still want to see how it's done? No! Start off with a box and set it to points. Then make the axis three by three by three. Throw down an attribute wrangle, and in here we're going to initiate our rotation. Our random rotation. Throw a solver down and let's just jump into it. Throw down another attribute wrangle underneath the previous frame, and we're going to type in a large amount of code. We start off by facing how, how much time we have, how, how fast it's going to be rotating, and then we jump into how many faces it has, how, how many axes it can spin on. We told it free, so we're then going to generate a random axis. So this way it will spin in any direction on the axis, of course. So we have each of the axis slices set up. There's a little test that comes up just to be like, okay, are you sure you're a point? Yeah, you're a point? Cool, spin. You then need to type down the best movie ever, Matrix 3. There's a link in the description that takes you to the CG wiki version, which, which is far more detailed than what I'm spewing out. I had a couple of problems uh, in that uh, it wasn't working. <laughs> it turned out that uh, I missed out a couple of brackets in my VEX code, so it's very important that you check through and you make sure that you know what you're typing up. I had to go through this about three times in order to finally discover, ah, yeah, there it is. I threw down a box, made it kind of tiny, and then another attribute wrangle. In this case, this code is actually activating like different colors for different faces. But I started having more problems. I was like, well, what the hell is going on here? This isn't on the faces. What, what gives, huh? I tried, tr tried just carrying on, pretending it was normal. That, that wasn't wise. Then I, then I threw down a little bevel. I wanted to make a Rubik's Cube that was a little bit curved. So, you know, it wasn't so hard when it would hit my head. Then I copied these to a point. What's going on with my dodgy faces? Turns out I had this set to points rather than primitives. With it all together, it looks great. It's spinning around, it's solving itself. I added a normal because I'm a very paranoid person about my normals. I gave this a plastic material, but I think in the end I used a clay or marble just because it looked a bit uh, beefier. I like that. That's a render, I guess. You know, then you can play around and then it turns into something like this. Anyway, hope you had fun. Um, Next time I'll try to be a little bit more original. <laughs>